Andrew Atkinson, and you're watching my first hand. I'm Andrew Atkinson from Panama City, Florida, 23. I'm a professional wakeboarder. The first time I stood up on a wakeboard, I, I remember just saying to myself, I want to do this as much as I can. I, I, I just was hooked. It, it's something I just was passionate about. It just kind of led to learning more and more and more until I got to the point where I wanted to start competing and start doing well in competitions. And before I knew it, things started to happen. One thing after another, I mean, getting sponsored by Mastercraft. CWB, Oakley, just all these people taking me on and saying, you know what, we think you can do this, go for it. But towards the end of last year, I had some big wins with the U.S. Open and winning the World Championships, and you just, it kind of catches me off guard because you never really thought it, thought it had happened. It's kind of unreal to me the opportunities that have happened because of the doors that have opened because of wakeboarding, so I still ride because I love to do it, and that, that's the bottom line. first went professional that if I wanted to have a chance I needed to I needed to move down to Orlando and just be around the scene basically that's where everything happens I and mean, that's where the magazine is some of the best photographers in the sport and uh, the majority of the best riders and I knew that I had to be there to learn from those guys learn from all of them so at first moving down to Orlando was to chase the dream but now it's it's turning into home for me telling you what I know take a little look and see I live in Windermere, Florida. It's basically just outside of Orlando, in the northwest part of Orlando. On a nice little private lake over there. And it's a great place to live and a great place to ride. First day we started on my first hand. I'd just gotten back from the CWB photo shoot. And I just needed a day to uh, go out and ride with some friends. Oh, the sun's actually coming out. Gonna do a little riding, maybe some chase boating, try to get some shots and just uh, play on the lake a little. There's nobody out here, it's Sunday afternoon. This is, uh, it's pretty rare. It should be fun. You get into wakeboard because of how it feels when you get out there and you just go ride, just the freedom of it. So free riding is, is a huge part of what I do and basically what it's all based around. And if I happen to learn, you know, a harder or a technical trick, when I'm out free riding, I'll, I'll take it into the competition. Rusty popped by for a set. Clouds parted, the weather was perfect, the rainbow came out, and he served some double ups, and I made a mode five, which is uh, a new trick for me, which definitely gets the confidence up before you head off for a tournament. <laughs> Stuff I haven't tried in a long time, and I was just pumped to be riding, actually be home for a few days. That's fun. That was a good boat day. So I've lived in Florida for 20 years, you know, and there's one thing I always wanted to do and never had a chance to. I was going on an airboat. All right, we're gonna go out here and 
12,000 acre lane, we're going to go ahead and see what we can find. We usually just seeing gators, different kind of birds, wildlife, stuff like that. We're going to go ahead and see what we can find. Good friends uh, Ryan Wolf and Aaron Caton came out and we went out rowing the airboats out in the swamp. started out with us just cruising around, seeing what that airboat could do, see how fast it could go. And then uh, we went gator chasing, went and found some, uh, some alligators. That is a wild Florida alligator right there. Do you hear him hissing? Yeah. It's the first time I've seen a uh, wild one. Oh, jeez! <laughs> 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 My favorite part of the airboat ride, he beaches it, sets it up on this little hill, and he's like, you guys want to see how much dust it takes to push one of these? We decided we better get out of there and uh, cruised over to uh, cut some threes in the airboat. Just got done on the airboat. Chad, our tour guide, hooked it up. It was an awesome time. We're gonna go back to the house and get ready for Japan. Just the uh, rude awakening this morning. Gonna hop on the flight and uh, gonna take about half of that 14 hours to sleep on the way to Japan. Well, in 2004, I went to Japan for the WWA World Series, and it was my first WWA win. It was my first victory. And so it was a little bit of anticipation to get back and go try to defend that. It's the first time defending a title. You know, that's a really cool thing. We will soon be arriving at the Tokyo Bay Ariake Washington Hotel. Long day of travel. Finally made it here to Tokyo. Going to hit Tokyo Bay tomorrow. But, uh, for now, I'm going to get some rest. Start early tomorrow. Basically our first full day in Japan, we got up pretty early because we were so messed up from the time change. We snap awake at 6 in the morning, we're like, hey, we're in Japan, I'm going to grab my camera, I'm going to go be a tourist. <laughs> Daibo. There's a Statue of Liberty. Yeah, we're down here at Tokyo Bay. This is the, uh, the site where we're going to have the WWA World Series Japan stop, the JWBA. And uh, this is the site right here. It's the day before the tournament. It's on a Friday, so it's still a weekday. Last year, we had like 70,000 people out here packing this beach. And uh, kind of personally, you know, it's got some meaning because it's where I took one of my first pro wins. Right there, actually. So the WWA World Series is a uh, series of five tournaments that is a means of bringing wakeboarding out there to the rest of the world and take it to a place where this level of wakeboarding has never been seen before and try to bring more people into the sport. And the Tokyo stop this year is the first stop of the, the series. Oh look, Andrew Odoki-san. Didn't sound Japanese enough, so. This is actually a, um, it's a sign, Japanese culture that they're, they're they're kind of, they're, they're accepting me. It's kind of a rite of passage whenever they change your name. It's like Andrew Adoki, son. There's a ceremony before the finals for the top eight guys that made it in. So they get us up there on stage, roll out this red carpet, and uh, then they call your name one by one. You cruise down that red carpet and you high five as many people as you can. And I think it's as much to get the crowd pumped up as it is the other riders. And it's, it's just to go out and do that before the finals, it's so much fun. <laughs> That's a pretty that's pretty much the best intro ever. One more Russ, one more. Woo! How cool is that? That was like WWF. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get my board ready. In 
the finals in the World Series and they get down to the top eight, they do a head-to-head -head format. First pairing up was myself and Yuki Taguchi from Osaka, Japan, but he also moved down to Orlando and uh, lived with us for about a year. So Yuki goes out, lays it down, has a few falls, so kind of left the door open a little bit. And I uh, matched him on the wake and stepped it up a little bit more on, on rails and made it through to the finals, but Yuki rode great and it's definitely a good first battle. You can hear the crowd so clear when you're out there riding, and Alex pushes you. It's a lot of people out here. So. Head to head, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> Me and the chat. Yeah. How are you doing? Got it. Chip. He's good. Chad's been on all weekends. Now it's me and Chad next round. So top four at least at this point. I'd like to get on the podium though. Chad's a guy you don't really want to be. I mean, you, you're glad to be in the finals, but he's not one of the guys you'd pick to be paired up with if you're head to head, because you know you pretty much are going to have to go for it if you want to have a chance. I ended up that round making a 900 coming into the dock, which set the pace and got me in the right state of mind for the finals for the last pair. And in the other head-to-head, -head, it was Daniel Watkins and Brett Eisenhower, two very good riders, and uh, Brett just barely edged out Watkins, and uh, so is me and Brett in the finals. I was first off the dock, and I knew there was no way I could go out and hold back and expect to win. but uh, pretty happy with the stand-up and opportunity is definitely there for Ike, but this should be good. Ike goes out there and just laid it down. I mean, huge road, road so big. It, it was, came down to a super tight. Neither of us knew, you know, we both, you know, we both were telling each other that we thought each other had won, and when it came down to it, I ended up taking the win two years in a row in Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> Japan is one of those places you go to, and you, you leave it, and you, you want to tell everybody about it. You know, going back this year and being able to actually the top last year's trip was great. I mean, I had more of my friends there, you know. There's a bigger crowd. People were just into it. So I say Japan this year, one up to last year. Could not have been a better time, and I can't wait to go back next year. Stay tuned for more of my So the weekend after Tokyo, we have the uh, Portland tour stop. So fly back, head to my good friend Jack Blodgett's house, uh, three hours south of Portland, Oregon, and glide to do a little free ride with some of the guys. Rusty made it up, Danny Harf came up, Parks came out for a day too. So just got a chance to get away from the tournament for a little bit and got back to doing what it's all about, just having fun, doing a little wakeboard. The plan is me doing all the freaking work all the time. Always carrying the gaskets, always going to the gas. That aside, we're gonna fill this bad boy up and we're gonna hit this river. Look at it, it's perfect.
pretty unique place that we're riding out here at Jack's. All these rolling hills, and we're on this river that's been dammed up, so you have this, this bridge at the end and this dam at the end, and these old bridge pillars that stick up out of the middle of it, and just, it's so different from most of the places I ride. Try the Kangen Road. During the middle of the season, you, know, you have tournaments all the time, and you get a chance to come out to a place and get away from everything and free ride with your boys, it's a gift. He's out. Check. Had to live the pandemonium for a moment. Do not show and focus, not an open case, and I close and supposed to ride. Had it loaded in cock, no, not as hard. I need the cold in the light so that it's lower than not. Just what we float to the top of the surface, perfectly serving the purpose. Evo globe is curdling slow like a tortoise. My board is bone, it's like odors and shambles. No one deserves it, but still a loop. It's stupid old group. Rusty Malinowski is out here. The guy loves to hit double ups. He's just doing some big glides and some big spins. Danny Harp goes out, does the same thing, hitting the nines the first try. He'll switch heel side nines the first try and just going huge off the double up. Had fun with it, made some mob fives and got to try some new things, got to watch the other guys go huge. So it's, it, was, it was fun right now here. From the land, skies, oceans and shores. West Coast syntax, underground hip hop artists, be the hardest. West Coast syntax, underground hip hop artists, be the hardest. West Coast syntax, underground hip hop artists, will be the hardest. West Coast syntax underground. So it was good to get some downtime, get to relax a little bit, and just free ride with the guys before the Portland tour stop, which is the last stop of the pro tour. Right there on the edge of top five, want to try to make it in. So hopefully this will set me up right for the last tour stop. The Mastercraft Pro 8 Board Tour is pretty much where the best of the best go to uh, see how well they rank against the other guys. You know, I mean, it's the, the, the elite competition. Last year I'd finished up seventh. I was sitting seventh, had a shot at top five coming to the last one. I knew coming into Portland that I had to get into the finals if I wanted to have a shot at top five. Is that dog? Yeah, dog. You ready? Yeah, I am. I went out in semifinals, had a fall into my first pass and the beginning of my second pass, which basically left me half the course to uh, get some stuff done on the rails and get some weight tricks in. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, well, good luck today. All right, thanks. To have fans, to have people that support me in my wakeboarding is huge. I mean, it just is, it pushes you whenever you're out at a tournament and they're right there cheering you on and telling you great run. And, you know, there's people out there that enjoy watching you that much that so you're doing something right that you can go out there and do it. And it's, it's really cool to see people line up in a two hour line in the heat just to get you to sign a poster for them. You know, it's, it's a pretty unreal thing. Made it through the finals, so I'm in there and uh, have a chance at getting that top five, possibly even top three on tour, but I'm going to shoot for that top five on the pro tour right now. It's going to be a big day. First round, get paired up with Danny Harf. He's not a guy you want to face first round of a head-to-head. -head. Uh, I went out, had a few falls. Danny stood it up. It would have been hard to beat him even if I did stand up. Danny went on to win the tour stop. Just stood up all weekend and absolutely killed it. Yeah, devil. <laughs> Current world champion Andrew Agassiz solidly landed a fifth spot in the overall standings.
Well, so we finished up the tour stop and it happened. I got top five on the tour behind uh, Phil and the three Aussies, Josh Sanders, Dana Watkins, and Brett Eisenhower. You know, so it's weird. I set all these goals just completely as just way out there, but hey, why not? I'm gonna shoot for them. Let's go for it. Now it's, it's winning, winning the Pro Tour. You know, if I'm gonna be doing competitions, why not? Why not do them to go out there and, and do the best I can at them? I mean, the level of riding amongst everybody is so high. Anybody can take it any weekend. And that's a, that's a really exciting thing to be a part of. But just, you know, I just kind of take it one step at a time and just kind of shoot for the next one. Don't expect it to happen, but when they do, it's great. Seashell, shell, 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 sh